Good morning, good evening, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Susan Chinson, and I am one of the producers at Arts Emerson in Boston, Massachusetts, on the unceded land of the Massachusetts Wampanoag and Nipmuc peoples. Before we begin, Adrian Wong of Spiderweb Snow Show in Ontario, Canada, has written this digital land acknowledgement, which I'd like to share. Since our activities are shared digitally to the internet, let's also take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within the technologies, structures, and ways of thinking we use every day. We are using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technologies that are central to much of the art we make leave significant carbon footprints, contributing to changing climates that disproportionately affect indigenous peoples worldwide. I invite you to join me in acknowledging all this, as well as our shared responsibility, to make good of this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, and allyship. One of the privileges of working with artists from around the world is finding opportunities to connect with them. Today, we'll be hearing a conversation between Boston-based Igor Golak and Beijing-based Wang Chong to discuss their experiences making online theater and the opportunities they see as we navigate making theater while we are unable to gather in person. If you have questions, please feel free to submit them using hashtag the future of online theater. If you are watching on Facebook, feel free to chime in in the comments. Now, I'd like to introduce our moderator today, Annie Levy. Annie is a theater maker and director whose work often revolves around mythology, historical turning points, and scientific breakthroughs. She has worked all over the world, from Brooklyn to Taiwan. She is a founding member of the Worldwide Lab, a member of the Lincoln Center Directors Lab, and associate member of SDC. Currently, she is the artistic director of Emerson Stage at Emerson College. Take it away, Annie. Thank you so much, Susan. Before we start today's conversation, it's my honor to introduce our guests and to share a brief glimpse of their work. Igor Goliak is the Arlequin Players Theater Artistic Director, and he's directed the New York Times Critics Pick, The State versus Natasha Benina, which carved out a new live performance genre in the age of virtual theater, performing to a worldwide audience in 40 US states and 60 countries. Igor received the 2020 Elliot Norton Award for Outstanding Directing for Arlequin's The Stone and was also nominated in the same year for his direction of Arlequin's The Seagull. He is an associate professor at the Boston Conservatory and has spent over a decade teaching the art of theater. He is the founder of the Igor Goyak Acting Studio and artistic director of Arlequin Players Theater, which has won numerous awards in the United States and internationally. And he has received an Elia Norton Award for his production of Dead Man's Diary at Arts Emerson. Arlequin's Players Theater is a multicultural, multinational collaborative that is growing year to year in the number of audience members, company actors, and volunteers. His theater has been invited to perform on famous stages at world renowned festivals all over the world, including Moscow Art Theater, the Festival of Yerevan Armenia, New York City, Chicago, Luvi Ukraine, Monaco, and many others. Wang Chang is the founder and artistic director of Beijing based performance group Theatre Terev Experimental. In 2008, Wang founded Theatre de Rêve Experimental, and in 2012, he started the Chinese New Wave Theatre Movement by presenting a series of new performances with innovative use of body, live video, and sound. In April 2020, he directed an online performance of Waiting for Godot, with four actors performing live from three cities, including Wuhan, the epicenter of COVID-19 that was still in lockdown. The performance attracted a record-breaking 290,000 audience members. With his unique touch, he has also translated and directed Chinese premieres, including Mueller's Hamlet Machine, Eve Ensler's The Vagina Monologues, and Willie Allen's Central Park West. He has been noted by the Beijing News as a new artist of the year and has received the Radcliffe Fellowship at Harvard University, the Asian Cultural Council Fellowship in New York, and the Han Suyun Award for Young Translators. 
Now let's take a moment to get familiar with their work. Take it away, Travis. Man, it was like I knew something was going to happen. Natasha, you're the baddest damn chick on earth. Would you marry me? He's mine. He was mine. I had no intention of giving him away and then she comes and won. And then Valera asks me, Natasha, what is your dream? Okay, dear friends from North Rhine, Westphalia, and friends from all over the world, hello. I am Wang Chong, a theater director based in Beijing. I am here now in Beijing, and today is uh, June the 19th, 2020. What I really want to share with you guys uh, is the situation of theater and cinema in Beijing. Cinema has been shut down since uh, early February. Vice president of a big cinema chain just committed suicide, which is a huge tragedy. He must be very desperate to see this situation. This situation might not be caused by COVID-19 only, maybe uh, the, the authority doesn't think uh, cinema and theater are essential parts of this society anymore. You can watch it at home, you can do it at home, maybe you don't have to exist. That's the attitude, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, cinema workers and theater people are suffering in China. As of my practice, uh, recently, in early April, I staged an uh, online theater performance, Waiting for Godot, with four actors performing at home in three different cities, including the epicenter of the pandemic, Wuhan. Our waiting for Godot uh, performed through two nights Act 1 in the first, Act 2 in the second, we had nearly 300,000 audience in total for one performance waiting for Godot. This is a record-breaking number in Chinese theater. This is very inspiring process for all of us because when you are hit by COVID-19, theater cannot be theater anymore, but at the same time, our innovation may open up a new space, which could be online theater performance, uh, could be virtual reality, could be anything. Our creativity has no boundary. After the success of Waiting for Godot, I uh, published online uh, the online theater manifesto. I wish more artists and theater practitioners could be part of this. Uh, we have to face the new reality, and traditional theater might not be that solution. Currently, I am preparing our next online theater performance, The Plague 2.0. Uh, obviously, it's going to be an adaptation of Gamu's novel. I wish to have six actors from six different countries performing in their own cities. So the Plague 2.0 is not going to be a plague in uh, one North African town. Instead, it's going to be about the pandemic that we're facing. I hope that more partners could join this project so that we can create it together. Uh, I know we're not as big as the stars of the One World concert, 
but our hearts are no smaller. I wish you guys get a chance to see this upcoming online performance, The Plague 2.0. And I wish the best of you guys. Take care. Thank you. I want to invite our two guests to join us and let's start talking about this new form of theater that we're all on the forefront of. Good morning, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Uh, I wanna start by defining our terms. Um, when people hear the phrase online theater, they often think about pre-recorded performances from before the pandemic that different artists and companies are now sharing out from their archive. But that's not what we're talking about here. So to start us off, uh, how do you both define online theater? What do you want your audience to anticipate um, when they get a ticket to an online theater performance? People always like to start. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, very, very nice uh, to be here with uh, with all of you. Hello, Chong. Hello, Annie. Um, you know, uh, I, I was brought up in the Russian School of Directing, and uh, one of the first things that they taught us was the fact that when you enter a new space, uh, physical space, you have to you have to understand what what is the energy flow. Uh, what is uh, what is the best way to affect audience uh, from uh, from this stage uh, using this architecture? If if it's round uh, audience uh, seating or is it just direct? It's completely different ways to affect audience. And, and and as a director, as you come into a space, you have to understand what are the best uses for this space. So how can you use it the best way possible to uh, ignite the material that you're staging? Um, and with uh, uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, you know, with our new virtual space, it's the same process for me anyway. You come into a space. Uh, this time it's virtual space, and you try to you try to understand what's the best way to to affect people, to ask the questions, and be effective in asking those questions, and uh, and getting those getting the response from the audience that you need in this virtual space. So be it virtual space or in person space. I think the uh, the approach is is exactly the same for me. Chong, what about for you? Um, yeah, as uh, I wrote in uh, the online theater manifesto, uh, recorded videos of theater uh, is not theater. It's merely uh, bad copies and uh, passing shadows of theater. It it definitely has academic value and historical value, but it's not. Uh, it's not uh, uh, performative in the sense that uh, it's happening now, it's happening uh, in this shared uh, virtual space. Uh, it's like we can have a conversation uh, right now, 12 hours apart, uh, and we can have this conversation in very different locations, but this conversation has to be here and now, here being in this, uh, Zoom room being in this uh, streaming uh, being, uh, but it has to be like uh, theater in this way. So uh, you can have definitely different definitions of theater, but uh, online theater, but my definition would be uh, it's, it's created online, it's created for an online audience, it's live, mm -hmm. it's in this uh, shared space, shared online space be it uh, Zoom, Facebook, virtual reality, uh, other forms in, in text forms, but it has to be here and now. This is uh, the essence of theater. Thank you. Yes, the importance of that ingredient of liveness is something that uh, is such a huge part of online theater, even when we're using technology in a different way, uh, which leads me to my next question. I'm curious, what was your your company's relationship with incorporating digital components into your work before the pandemic? Uh, did you or your company frequently utilize digital technology in your work, or uh, did you avoid digital technology? 
Uh, uh, we we had used uh, digital technology. The uh, stone, as you mentioned, uh, this year um, we had eight uh, television sets, and and it was live and it was altered. It was two realities. I think it fit the play very well. Where there is a reality, there is the truth reality that people are digging up from the ground there, and there is the reality that's kind of mirroring uh, this reality at the same time. Uh, and those two realities can be completely different. What's interesting uh, when the, there is a combination of uh, live uh, live theater and um, and and the screen reality is that it, although the camera and you see the same things, uh, you actually see different things. So uh, the camera could be used as a an additional reality that's created that's also absorbed. Uh, and used for the themes of the play. That has been my experience. Thank you. Sean, what about for you? Yeah, this, this is a great question because uh, uh, I've been doing it since the very beginning of my career. Uh, I've been doing it actually since my pre-career uh, years. You know, when I was a, a graduate student at University of Hawaii, my very first directing work uh, was uh, uh, Hamletism. It's a, a adaptation of uh, uh, Hamlet, uh, but I used heavily uh, recorded uh, videos and uh, uh, digitally uh, created videos in that work. Uh, and uh, in my third work, uh, E-Station, I uh, started to use uh, live video. Uh, later on, I used um, 13 cameras in one work uh, for example, in this uh, constellations that we just presented in Under the Radar Festival in 2020 in New York, uh, we had 13 cameras, 12 of, 12 of them uh, form uh, 12 o'clocks uh, mm -hmm. around a, a round platform, uh, and the other one was uh, in the audience. So the two actors uh, only uh, needed to remember where they should walk to and where they, uh, which camera they should be uh, performing to so that they can uh, walk out a cinematic uh, visual presentation on the stage. And at the same time, you get to see uh, their physicality, their relationships uh, with cameras and so forth. So uh, I was a big fan of uh, uh, video-based theater when I, uh, uh, before I, uh, studied theater, then I very soon uh, adopted this approach as a director. Great, it sounds like you were both in a position to really embrace this opportunity of utilizing technology in this different way. Um, Igor, you already mentioned a little bit about the questions that a director uh, asks themselves when they move into a space. And I'm curious, um, what questions do you both find you need to ask yourself when you embark on creating a piece of online theater? You know, it, how is the way of making work online different? What has stayed the same? Uh, for example, um, in The State versus Natasha Benina, the role of the audience is very, very specific uh, and um, it, it's such a large part of the, of the way to experience the piece. I'm curious if uh, figuring out a role from the audience is now uh, a much larger part of your thinking as a director or what questions do you find that you need to ask yourself now that you're working online? In my opinion, uh, uh, in a lot of ways, European theater or, or theater in general uh, is, is going, um, is revolutionizing again and, and changing. And one, uh, I think one of the revolutions that has already started in theater is uh, the, the role of the audience. The role of the audience is no longer it seems like generally in theater is no longer a buyer of art. Uh, it's, it's more of a collaborator uh, where the theme or the message of the play almost depends on the audience, where the audience is absolutely needed to make the, the play work. So the audience is a co-conspirator or a collaborator uh, of, of the piece where they make the piece. The audience make the piece. And I think it's a general, uh, generally what's happening in, in theater right now, uh, uh, where it's going, uh, because being a buyer of theater, it's no longer, it's no longer interesting. It's, it's very traditional. 
and I don't think it speaks to today's uh, today's uh, world. Uh, so uh, uh, the the questions that I ask myself are, are exactly the same: is how do we take how do we take uh, this play, and how do we effectively, uh, professionally, effectively use the medium that, that we have, be it a physical theater or or a virtual space? But the role of the audience is very important, no matter where you're staging, virtually or uh, or in person. Thank you, Chang. What about for you? Questions that you asked yourself, uh, specific to audience involvement or otherwise. Yeah, what's specific of uh, uh, this year's uh, theater practice is that uh, uh, online theater is not just a, another technological gig. Uh, if you create such a work in 2019, it might have been, but uh, uh, this is 2020. We have a, a very heavy context in this world that every, uh, every audience knows. Uh, so every audience comes to your online performance knowing that uh, theaters are closed. How can you, you know, uh, still uh, create a, a work using this platform? Uh, so uh, you have to keep that in mind as a creator. Uh, in our uh, Waiting for Godot, definitely the whole interpretation of the Beckett's text has been uh, directed at uh, the current situation of the world. Uh, you know, we have uh, uh, the two uh, leading characters uh, talking to each other in different homes. They are obviously, uh, you know, separated uh, by uh, the COVID and they, uh, they are waiting for something to happen so that they can free themselves. Uh, some, this something might be the end of lockdown in their community or in their city or uh, the, the uh, invention of uh, uh, the vaccine or the, uh, uh, the zero number of uh, you know, weekly uh, increase, increase of uh, uh, patients. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, it's, it's more specific than the, the grand philosophical uh, Godot that uh, Brack, uh, Beckett has uh, imagined. Mm -hmm. uh, and in our version, we definitely used uh, all sorts of spaces uh, in the uh, uh, actors' homes. Uh, and what's so different from creating a work on the stage is that the actors uh, were on their own. Mm -hmm. They have to manage where they move their iPad or a MacBook. They have to manage what light should be added uh, over uh, what uh, over where and uh, uh, how do they smoothly move uh, such a camera to uh, the next scene? How do they make the transitions? Is the time enough? And they lead the audience uh, explore their own uh, living and now artistic spaces. These are very new. Um, creative experiences uh, for us. And it's also very new for our audience. Uh, can I just say, can I ahead. just say something? I think I just find it so incredibly uh, interesting. And I don't think there is a better way if, if, there, if there's the, I don't think there's a better way to stage right now uh, waiting for the Godot than from Wuhan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, In-person theater cannot compete with this idea of uh, waiting for for Godot from the epidemic of the uh, uh, from the uh, from the uh, center of the of the of this epidemic, uh, I sh I think just just this idea directorially just blows up the content to a, to a completely new level where there is nothing that can compete with that right now because it, this is theater because it's taking a point of pain and it's taking and it's taking the uh, uh, you know the epicenter of of all of uh, the, the pain of this world, and and uh, and bringing something to us, and we're all waiting for Godot right now. All of us are waiting for Godot, uh, right? But it's coming from Wuhan. It's there's nothing in theater that can compete with this idea. I think right now there's no better way to stage uh, to stage waiting for Godot right now, in my opinion, than than uh, unfortunately I didn't see the production, but the idea is just incredible. The, the, the dramaturgy is inserted in this idea and it has to work. Um, and, and I think that 
this is real theater. It's it's no matter if it's site specific or it's uh, uh, I don't know documentary or inclusive or or whatever. It's all theater, and this is this is I think very important that theater has different representations, unlike a book or a movie. A movie is just you watch it on one screen. If it's two screens, it's already uh, video art. Uh, with theater, you can have the representations of it in so many different with actors, without actors. But the main the, the main question that theater asks is to, what do you express right now? What's the point of pain you express right now? And what's the best medium to express it? And I think in, in this idea, as I'm hearing about uh, waiting for Godot and from Wukhan, there's, there's nothing better in theater that, uh, uh, that can uh, outthink this idea, I think. So. Right. Our current yeah, limitations. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, our current limitations are the, are freeing and sort of helping us create the most truthful ways of telling these stories. I'm really, I'm curious, um, and just from the clip, it looked like for Waiting for Godot, you see a lot of online theater right now trying to make it seem like actors are all in the same space. And it looked like in your Godot that you embraced the fact that each actor was in uh, a, a different space entirely. Um, with the state versus Natasha, the, the use of space and the sort of magic that can be created in a confined space is a very active part in the, of, of, the, of the performance. I'm curious, um, how has your thinking about space and its limitations and its freedoms changed as you continue to work uh, in the online theater medium? Has anything, uh, have you noticed a shift in, in how you're thinking? I'm, I'm just curious at how that's all changed over the course of the couple of months that you've gotten a chance to develop this. Chang, do you want to start us off? Oh yeah, uh, I think uh, a big realization for us is that uh, what is what is uh, presence, uh, what is uh, uh, here and now. You know what? Uh, what is here? Uh, for example, what is uh, the here in our conversation now? Is it is it in my room? Do you have to be in my room to to be here, or do you have to be? Uh, in your rooms, uh, in order to be uh, uh, watching us, no, we're 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 all part of this. We're all here in this virtual space. We're all here and now. This is the the big realization. So when you create a work for online theater, you don't have to be uh, pretending that the audience and the performers are in the same room, and you don't have to be pretending that. Uh, the performers are in the same room because they are not. Uh, there's no way that you can uh, uh, create such a, uh, you know, uh, a reality. The reality, the real reality, is that we're in different uh, uh, cities, we're in different uh, homes, but we're here and now in this conversation. Thank you, Igor. What about for you? Any uh, discoveries about the use of space that? Uh, evolved over the course of working this way? Um, well, when, when I started again, we started rehearsing uh, State versus Natasha, uh, we, we rehearsed it and then about two, three days before the opening, uh, we understood that it's not working. None of, mm -hmm. none of it is working because, uh, because uh, for the issue that uh, the, the audience didn't take part in it and it was we we're just competing with film. And this, this medium is completely different. We can't be competing with film. Film has much bigger budgets than me in my living room. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we have to create, we have to insert something where the audience takes part in it. The audience plays a role. The audience is active. It's happening here and now live. And the audience knows that it's, that they can be called upon to participate. Therefore, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, some audience start out with a, with a drink like this, and then by the end they they move in because they, they know that they can be they're needed for the production. Unlike when you're watching Netflix, uh, it's it, you're not necessarily needed for for the film to work. Thank you. So I I, want, I know the audience hasn't gotten a chance to see this yet. But Chong, you created and released uh, an online theater manifesto, uh, which I encourage uh, everyone to uh, sit down and take a look at. 
Um, and in the manifesto, you state that theater has been, big surprise, revealed to be non-essential. I'm, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on how theater can become essential again? Yeah, I think uh, 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 every artist uh, right now is uh, trying to answer that question. And we see a lot of, just by looking at the theater uh, section of New York Times, uh, I can see a lot of answers, including uh, the uh, performance of uh, a State versus uh, Natasha Bonina uh, and uh, some other online theater works. We're all answering this question. This is uh, uh, really good. We haven't stopped. We haven't uh, uh, been waiting for the miracle to happen. We all provide what we uh, think about uh, the current situations and we are all in a way creating something like what Peter Brook has uh, uh, coined as uh, immediate theater. We have to you know, make something happen. We have to make it work. Uh, and uh, my version, my answers uh, are uh, waiting for Godot in April and, uh, uh, and the plague 2.0 in 2021. Uh, in that work, I'm imagining uh, a performer uh, uh, in Wuhan and a performer uh, in New York and a performer uh, in Europe uh, and three other performers in uh, three other different countries. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, really about uh, this pandemic. It's about uh, here and now, it's about the problems we're facing and the problems that theater artists are facing. Uh, so this is definitely uh, as Igor has uh, said, uh, this is definitely not uh, uh, film industry. This is uh, uh, what theater people can do. Thank you. Igor, what about for you? Do you, uh, I don't know if you agree that uh, theater has been uh, revealed to be non-essential in these times, but you know, what, are, what do you think needs to happen for theater to become uh, the essential force that it potentially could be uh, in the future? Is there any, any steps that you see being taken uh, collectively or individually to make theater um, much more essen essential to a larger perception? Mm, that's a difficult question. I, I, mm, I don't know. I don't know what it needs to do. I think what theater needs to do is relate to people uh, as, uh, as Chunk said, uh, in today's world here and now and speak to them about today's truths and in the, in the forms of today's language uh, where theater, theater is, 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 is to, has to have the breath of today, the intake and the, uh, the inhale and the exhale of the atmosphere that we live in today. We can't just, the worst thing that can happen is uh, we reopen theaters uh, and uh, uh, somebody finds a, a vaccine, we reopen theaters and we go back to, uh, you know, traditional, traditional theater as is, then it becomes irrelevant. Uh, it has to stay relevant. It, it, look at how, the, uh, you know, the we weapons of the world have changed so much since the 50s, uh, but theater uh, a lot of times has remained the same. Uh, weapons that kill each other that uh, you know uh, so uh, it has to stay today it has to has to be relevant then then it becomes essential if it's relevant if it's a relic of the past if it's a museum then it's then it's it's harder to raise money for that <laughs> i totally agree uh, if you look at the major theater movements uh, in history you know it's all about the here and now in their times uh, theater is never the same uh, after World War II, for example, yeah. and uh, theater shouldn't be the same after uh, and during this pandemic. Yeah, we're going to we're going to move to a new genre, a new ism after we come out of this. We're going to need to. Um, another question that also uh, comes from our audience is. Um, what do you wish to see incorporated into theater in the future? What, what have we created an experience now in online theater that we hope we continue to carry over? 
uh, I suppose both philosophically and perhaps um, uh, practically and technically. Igor, do you want to take the first question? Sure, sure. Uh, I think I think uh, the main thing, the main approach. Uh, uh, you know, I also teach at Boston Conservatory uh, uh, acting. Um, laboratory. And uh, one of the main takeaways, I think, for last semester for my students was to remain flexible, to, to remain creative in, in any circumstance. Because, because we, we have to be gener generative artists. We can't be theater. At, okay, this is, this is the way we've been doing theater. Theater has to be reinvented every day for it to be alive. Mm. And that's the main takeaway, I think, uh, for my students and for me, and I it should be for the rest of the theater world. Theater has to be relevant today and flexible and express today's world with today's media, not complaining, but using it as a springboard, using it as a springboard for new inventions, new, new inventions of theater where it speaks to me, where Godot never comes to Wuhan. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, I think what's, what we have to you know, uh, uh, note is that uh, it's not easy uh, at the same time to make uh, your theater practice flexible. It's not easy as a theater artist to make uh, yourself immediate. Uh, and that's a big challenge for any of us. It's not that I'm speaking right now, uh, uh, it would mean that uh, I have you know, uh, I have uh, solved all the problems. No, I also have my uh, artistic past. I also have that tradition of uh, theater heavily uh, in myself, in my brains, in my um, everyday practice. But we have to uh, we have to question ourselves every day. We have to uh, you know ask again and again: Is it current? Uh, uh, am I uh, innovating? Uh, are we speaking the uh, immediate truth uh, to the audience? We have to ask ourselves a lot of questions like that in order to, you know, be here and now. And I think, can I just uh, mention one more thing? And I think uh, it, the worst would be uh, two, two possible uh, uh, bad outcomes would be to, to do theater as, uh, as it was done before the pandemic. And the second one, no, it's exactly the opposite. We should do a lot of cameras in our, our productions. Uh, maybe no cameras in our productions, but it, it's, it's the approach that, that's very important. It, it's not about using more technology or less technology. Uh, technology is very difficult to use and very difficult to make it relevant because uh, technology in, uh, uh, in theater, you know, it, it, has to be, it has to be just perfect in an in in-person uh, production for it to work because it has been done so many times. It's also become a, a somewhat of a tradition. So the, the takeaway is in no way, okay, let's use more technology in, in our productions. It's only a way, it's only a tool to express something meaningful. Uh, only if you cannot live without it, then you should use it. But the takeaway is in the flexibility, mm -hmm. is in the approach, is in uh, sensing, is inhaling and exhaling uh, today's world. A question that I hear a lot floating around uh, when different theater practitioners get together is once it's safe to assemble again, will online theater continue to exist as its own art form um, or will it f be folded back into theater that happens in a theater space? Igor, I I've heard you speak in the past a little bit about um, where you might see the future of online theater specifically for your company. Um, would you speak a little bit to that? Do you see online theater sticking around as its own entity or being folded in completely to theater as we used to know it? I think it's definitely here to stay. Uh, it's the proof of concept. Look at 300,000 people came to see. That's a pretty good house. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good house. I don't know many theaters in Boston that uh, <laughs> have uh, that, that large of a house. And, uh, and you know, so uh, the proof of concept has happened. I think we like it or not, it's go it's going to exist. Uh, uh, you know, there's going to be better versions of it, and there's going to be not so great versions. Just like in live theater, there's better versions and not so not so great. I think uh, I think this is going to continue. I think uh, it's co it's convenient. 
I think it's equitable. And I also, I, and I also think it's another door to the theater. You know, in, in one of our productions of State versus Natasha, um, we had an audience member mention that, you know, I have a, I have a, uh, a, a, a young daughter. I have, uh, I have my wife and it's very difficult for us to get out to, to see a uh, theater in uh, uh, downtown in Boston where ticket prices are hundred bucks each. Then we have to get a, a hire a babysitter. Then we have to hire, uh, get there, get back, find parking and so forth. And it's, the commitment is so big for us right now uh, to, uh, to go to the theater. And for me to just, oh, and I haven't been to the theater in a while. And she says, for me to open up uh, a computer and uh, see a show, the commitment is so small because I can close the computer. So as, as one of the another audience members uh, formulated it, uh, is it's a new door to the theater. Mm. I think it's a new door to the theater where people can examine, and she also said, you know, now I'm, I'm interested in your aesthetic. I, I want to come to see your in-person shows. Otherwise she would never have made her way out to Needham, Massachusetts, if anyone knows where that is. <laughs> Chong, what about for you, once there's a vaccine and we're in the future, do you see online theater as becoming part of your practice, uh, separate from theater that might happen uh, in a live in a theater? Or is this something that you see yourself uh, folding together uh, in the future? I definitely see a future of online theater uh, because we can do so many things in our lives uh, online. We can manage work online. We can talk to people in another city online. We can, uh, uh, you know, uh, save our most precious uh, uh, data, pictures, memories uh, online. We can do so many things that we cannot do offline mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in the uh, manner of being online. So it's the same. We can do uh, so many theatrical things online, which we cannot do offline with uh, some things. For example, you can, uh, you can talk to the audience in theater, yes, but you can talk to the audience in another way, uh, in uh, online theater, just as we saw, just as I saw in uh, uh, State versus uh, Natasha Banina. Uh, the work talked to uh, the online theater audience uh, in, a, uh, in a way that cannot be uh, done uh, in a uh, real theater. So definitely uh, online theater has uh, a future. It has uh, its own aesthetics, but maybe not in 2020 yet, but with more uh, artistic practice from all over the world, uh, I can see that. Great, a question came in from the audience uh, and both of you have already spoken uh, to this a little bit where do you see online theater in five years? And are there, what are the barriers to getting there? So this is, this is online theater, not in the immediate future, but with real staying power. Do either one of you wanna uh, take a stab at imagining what that future online theater looks like? I just, um, I cannot address that question uh, directly, but uh, I uh, cannot get rid of, uh, uh, this image from my mind uh, from time to time that uh, one day uh, a performance, uh, uh, an online theater performance may happen in the space, uh, uh, whereas the audience are watching it from uh, this planet or another planet, <laughs> or uh, the online theater uh, happens somewhere and the, uh, uh, the audience are watching it in the North Pole. Uh, I seriously had these images in my mind. Uh, and uh, uh, we're, we're at the beginning, uh, perhaps, uh, of uh, World War II, and we, we don't know uh, how long the war will last. Maybe uh, uh, the vaccine would come uh, in early 21. Maybe uh, it comes, uh, uh, the, the effective one comes uh, 10 <laughs> years later. You don't know. Uh, so you don't know uh, uh, the development of uh, online theater. Uh, if the worst scenario happens, then online theater might be the only legitimate uh, theater form for several years, which is sad, uh, but it's uh, an opportunity of online theater. And again, 
uh, this is only an opportunity for online theater. Without this opportunity, uh, I would still imagine that there's a big future for online theater uh, because it has its own aesthetics. Thank you. Igor, what about for you? Five years in the future, what is online theater? I started dreaming uh, uh, to Chong's idea and I already, uh, uh, so I had to come back to earth a little <laughs> bit. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful point that Chong made, but also uh, I think, you know, uh, our theater, our small theater company is based in Mida, Massachusetts, which is outside of Boston. And, you know, the state versus Natasha again, in a lot of ways, deals with um, deals with uh, systems failing young people, and you know to speak to that and have a person not from a North Pole, but and and, and thankfully uh, even Chung came to see, but uh, from Dorchester, uh, you know, or, or from Roxbury, people that maybe don't drive that would never have come to see to see that show from from nearby, uh, and that maybe uh, can't afford to see the show. This makes it much more equitable. And, and I would never have these audiences from, from you know, 15, 20 minute drive uh, for us. I would never get these audiences from Dorchester, from Roxbury that, that come and, and see something, something new. It makes it equitable, uh, which, is, uh, which is something that uh, I hope uh, this type of virtual performances uh, will bring attention to. Right, and it's something that the theater is actively always trying to work towards, and now it right. might actually achieve it in a different way. Um, the audience member was also wondering about barriers to uh, success of online theater. And, you know, uh, other than um, hardware, software, technology, do either of you get a sense of just um, attitudes and disbeliefs of the art form as a barrier to? the success of online theater um, as an art form, as a medium. I'm sure all of you or both of you have encountered conversations about people who do not believe that online theater has value. It's just a placeholder. So do you, do you have any sense of the barriers of what um, audience members need to embrace in order for online theater to thrive and to flourish? <laughs> Chung, do you want to try? Yeah, uh, as as Igor has said, uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> online. <laughs> seriously, uh, online theater is breaking uh, class barriers, and uh, uh, very often, especially in the West, you see uh, not only class barriers uh, in theater, but also uh, a, a very uh, specific uh, age group and uh, ethnic group uh, are watching theater, but maybe not other uh, age groups and other ethnic groups are watching theater. Online theater might be uh, an opportunity uh, for more audience uh, to be involved uh, and it may uh, open up uh, new spaces, not only uh, the aesthetic ones, but also uh, you know, viewership, uh, participation, uh, uh, democracy in uh, the art form. It has a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Igor, what about for you? Any barriers that you uh, anticipate philosophically? Um, as Chang said, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, <laughs> There's a Russian fable when one, one, <laughs> never mind. Um, <laughs> so um, I don't know barriers. I, 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 you know, there's so, there's so many barriers for artists in life. Like it would be strange for Chong and I not to have barriers. Like it, it, it it's impossible. So, and you know, the proof of con three hundred thousand people came to see. <laughs> what what else do you want to like? To when are you gonna have a house like that? Like so, uh, the proof of concept has already has already happened. Uh, the, the people that don't believe in it, that's fine. It, it, it's it's not about belief. It's about what you what you want to do and how how you think. Uh, what do you think about uh, expressing uh, the play in a specific uh, with using a specific medium? 
it's it's like making it's 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 about making an artistic choice um and it's my artistic choice i don't have like i don't have to have people uh tell me that it's a good artistic choice or not but it's my artistic choice to express this point of pain through uh or love or passion through uh this medium so thank you and another amazing thing about uh the online theater art form is it allows for connection and community between artists that otherwise may not have crossed paths. Uh, with that in mind, I'm curious, do, uh, do you have questions for each other that you wanna, uh, that you wanna voice in this space? I know uh, Chong has had an opportunity to, to watch The State versus Natasha. We just saw clips from Godot. So there's not been a lot of time to uh, really study up on each other's aesthetic, but just in hearing each other uh, speak, do you have questions about process for each other? Yeah, uh, Igor, what's next? <laughs> uh, what's next? Um, so it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's actually, it's actually, I'm, I'm really, uh, and I, I just heard that you did this play uh, recently or, or somewhat recently. Um, I, I'm really curious about uh, Hamlet Machine by Heine Miller. And I think it's very timely and it relates with the civil, uh, civil unrest that's happening today uh, in our society. And it's kind of um, uh, grassroots, uh, grassroots, you know, uh, upheaval of some sort. Um, it also is, you know, in the Hamlet machine, there's a character, the Hamlet that takes off the masks and says, you know what, Hamlet does, no longer expresses me. And I think, I think doing it, especially with a Shakespeare company in partnership, would be <laughs> would be ideal. What about you, Chung? Yeah. Uh, uh, besides this, uh, the Plague 2.0 for 21, I'm also uh, uh, preparing a, uh, uh, a cyber performance, also online. Uh, using the the uh, hottest game of the year, uh, Animal Crossing: New Horizons. Uh, I want to tell a story about uh, uh, class and uh, consumerism uh, in contemporary China uh, using this uh, uh, very light-hearted, cute world of Animal Crossing. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful idea. I I went and researched it after. Uh, after after you mentioned it in our in our, in our talk because I didn't I had no idea about this game I think it's a great idea there's a there's a virtual theater attempt uh, by a company in Russia that did uh, I think they they did the cherry orchard using Minecraft wow. yeah I saw that so news all, <laughs> so it, it's all the characters are, and you kind of they built this their their own theater virtually. So you go into your theater, into this theater, this actual theater, model of this theater, you roam around, you can roam around just like in a game, and then you can pick a seat for yourself and you're watching. Uh, I think the idea is interesting. I, I don't know, I don't know if it worked all the way, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a great experimentation. Yeah. Great. Uh, we're almost out of time. I wanna leave a moment to see if there are any other questions from the audience. Uh, while we wait for any questions to come in. Um, I'm curious throughout all of this, what has been the most surprising? What has been the most surprising thing that has happened uh, in both of your journeys in making online theater, both positive or problematic? What is, a, what is a surprise that has revealed itself to you in the past couple of months since we went into lockdown? I don't know if either, I'm looking for the light bulb over, over, over either of your heads for who to throw that to first, but... Uh, Igor, do you, do you feel like sure. you want to take that one as a uh, yeah. surprise? Uh, well, the surprise was, of course, when, when you put on a play, you never know what's going to happen. You never know how the audience is going to, it seems good to you, but you never know. Okay. And uh, with this, you know, with, with audience members, and, and uh, uh, Chunk has much more experience in this, but with audience members, you know, uh, they start chatting in the, in the beginning of the show and hello from China, from Australia, from uh, Egypt, uh, from, uh, what time is it in Egypt? It's 4 a.m. Uh, and, and, and then they tune in to see your show. And it's just an incredible feeling. I, 
And the thing is that I see, uh, you know, a lot of YouTubers have already gone much, you know, pass through this because they do their live uh, feeds and live uh, things and, and people appear from different parts of the world. But in a theater production to have audience from all over the world, this is just a completely new feeling for me and such a huge surprise. I mean, logically, it's not surprising because, okay, if people are interested, they're going to buy tickets. But it was just to see people from all over the world in my show and saying hello from Cairo and from uh, Mexico City is just an incredible feeling. Thank you. Chang, what about for you, something that's been surprising in the past couple of months of making art? Yeah, especially uh, in the creative process of uh, 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 Waiting for Godot. Uh, you know, I had this vague picture of uh, what online theater could be and what uh, uh, our Waiting for Godot could be, and we stepped into uh, this uh, exploration. But in that creative process, we found uh, so much uh, pleasure in uh, creating stuff using this platform. You can do all sorts of things. And the actors, they transformed their own uh, homes into performing um, areas. And uh, we uh, rented two cars to, to, uh, uh, to capture what's uh, special on the street and what's special uh, uh, in Wuhan. And we really captured the vibe of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, April 2020 and we, we really enjoyed that uh, creative process. This is uh, uh, really something uh, besides, you know, the uh, all the uh, audience number and audience participation and so forth. Uh, I found something that uh, um, has been uh, missing for uh, a period of time in my career. And to end things, any uh, brief pieces of advice you wanna give to young or established artists who have been um, a little nervous and trepidatious for attempting to make work online? Any piece of advice you can give them to at least dip their toes into the water of online theater? I would, yeah, I would, I would suggest uh, try it. Uh, try it, approach it. It's, it's, uh, but forget everything you know about theater and kind of re relearn things as you go. Don't try to put in theater into this. It, it's not gonna work. The acting is different. The directing is different. And, and the thing is that you have the tools that, that you've been given by your, uh, uh, by your studies and your experience, but you kind of also have to forget it and relearn things, reapproach things, question things that you already know. See, for, forget that you're a theater artist, you're an artist. Go forth and create. Thank you. Totally. I just want to say, uh, be bold and be wild. Yes. Be bold and be wild. I think that's uh, a, a great way to end things. Uh, Igor, Chong, I want to thank both of you for taking the time to share your experiences and your journey with us. I wanna let everybody who watching know that it, you have an opportunity to catch State versus Natasha uh, tomorrow night and Sunday night. Tickets are available at artsemerson.org. Thank you so much, everyone. Go out, be brave, be wild, make art, and have a good rest of your day. Thank right. you, Anne. Thank you. Thank Bye. you very much, Amy. Bye, have a good day. <laughs>